Hey guys, welcome back to Fish on Northwest for this week's how-to. Not in the bait lab, we're actually out here on the river. Wanted, wanted to take advantage of this particular piece of water to show you uh, how conducive bobber dogging is and why I would choose to use it on this particular piece of water versus a vertical presentation in a slower moving piece of water that's ideal for holding Chinook. This piece of water behind me uh, has some real nice flow and current to it. It has some soft edges and it uh, it comes yeah, kind of at a collection point, right? The, the water is flowing uh, the width of the river and then it narrows down right here, kind of pushes all the current to the far side of the river, almost right from the middle to the far side. You have a real nice current seam and between you and that current seam, you have uh, real nice deeper stable water with not a lot of current where those fish like to tuck in. I use the current seam with the bobber dogging to draw my presentation downriver right at the edge of that current, oftentimes where those fish like to lie. The float working in conjunction with your stick lead dragging on the bottom, as I've explained uh, so many times in the bait lab, is ideal for navigating that presentation right down the travel lane of where those fish like to lie. So basically I'm going to take this piece of water here, I'm going to show you where and how you should be casting with a float dogging presentation uh, or bobber dogging, float dogging, float drifting, bobber dogging. Remember when I'm standing on the shoreline I like to refer to it as float drifting because I'm basically drift fishing with a float. So I'm going to show you where to cast, how to cast, how to work a piece of water and basically how to mend your line properly when float drifting. First thing we start with is some good bait, okay? So here on this particular river, everything is rigged as I've shown you um, multiple times in the bay lab. All right, I got my top shot. I have my float stop set up there about eight or nine foot based on the depth of this hole. That's the travel of my bobber to where it's gonna stop. Remember, the lead is dragging on the bottom and my bait being neutral buoyant will somewhat float up off the bottom and be within that strike zone. Leader is about 20 inches, okay? I can run a double hook set up here and I simply pull out the egg loop. I typically cut my bait size depending on where I'm fishing and what I'm fishing for. For Coho and Chinook, I'm gonna put about a 50 cent size piece of bait on there, just in the egg loop. I don't get real worried about putting it all wrapped up on the hook or putting the hook through it. I just secure it in the bait loop and that thing is ready to fish. One thing I wanna show you is how well good eggs milk out and put scent trail down river in front of your presentation. Take a look at this. So here's our eggs in the water. See all that oil coming off of them. You can see the fluorescence actually in the water of those eggs. And you can see the milk trail. Look at those things milk out. When those are bouncing down river, that's exactly what you want to see. You want to see that that bait milking out, sending scent down river. That's a sign of a good egg, nice and juicy, putting plenty of scent in the water, and exactly what Chinook and Coho go after. So, now that we got a good piece of bait on there, we're gonna cast this out here and show you exactly how. So, as we walk out here, I look at this piece of water, and again, that current seam is halfway across. I got some nice soft water out here, about midpoint. I'm gonna cast about a 45 degree upstream. And as that float comes towards me, I'm gonna collect my slack, always keeping the slack line in and around the float, maybe no more than a foot or two. If you're mending it correctly, you can actually feel the tip of the rod uh, as the weight's dragging on the bottom, okay? So we're gonna cast this upriver. As it comes to me, I'm collecting my slack. Notice I keep the line up off the water, following the float. My rod tip is following the float. I mend that back towards it. Now I can go ahead and lay this braid on top of the water and just let it follow. Mending, keeping the float moving down river. Again, it's laying over because the weight is dragging, okay? So your float's gonna point down river because 
your weight is dragging. I'm gonna throw it a little more inside in the slower water so we can talk about mending your line. Okay, to show you how we follow our float and mend our line when bobber dogging, I'm gonna throw it a little to the inside of the soft water. It's okay to leave the braid lying on top of the water and you'll see it kind of collects in the slow moving water and we just gotta do a rod uh, tip lift and roll that kind of allows that braid to realign so everything is following the float down river. So we're gonna cast this right out here. As it comes to me, I have a couple options. One, I can pick up the slack and follow it. Now I'm gonna open my spool and let it feed line. But see, in the slow water, I'm getting some line belly, so I need to lift and roll. Bring it back to the float and keep everything moving in a straight line. I always want the rod tip following the float, okay? So now I'm gonna lift and roll. That brings the line back behind the float and I can just open my spool and I allow the line to follow the float on down. Now, if I was drift fishing, that line would pendulum in, okay? But because I have a float on there, I can leave that spool open, bobber down, and I can continue to allow line to follow that float down river. We'll do that one more time. I'm gonna follow. If I need to, I can collect extra. I'm gonna roll that back, get behind it. Pull with the rod tip. Now I'm just letting out line, letting it drift. Still letting out line. You only go down as far as you feel confident that you can set a hook once that bobber goes down, okay? probably far enough. Now, oftentimes I see guys out here on the river and when you're fishing for Chinook and Coho, sometimes they will hit that egg skein, but oftentimes, and it's been proven time and time again, a, uh, a nice, fresh, juicy glob of eggs on there, more times than not, will entice a strike. So I just take that old skein off Throw that away, hold on to my bait loop. Gonna get into the bait box here, cut some eggs off. In that bait loop, all I'm doing is I'll double those eggs up a little bit and I'll put them in here. Now, I can leave that on there or I can rinse it off so it doesn't get all over my fishing rod. So we're gonna do that. And now, these eggs have not touched the water and I do that on purpose. When I take a fresh bait out and put it on there, when this hits the water, you will see how much juice and scent and liquid come off of these eggs when they hit the water. Now that cloud of scent is traveling down in front of that bait, kind of grabs the attention of any fish down river. Following my float, men get to this midpoint I can open my spool and allow it to go down. So basically it's just keep repeating the process. I'm going to work this piece of water, I'm going to start in close and then I'm going to throw to that far side of the seam and then I'm going to walk down river about 15 feet. This is a pretty lengthy hole. It's got a real nice constant state of flow to it and it widens out down here and actually deepens up, okay? And where it deepens up if my float is going down river and all of a sudden it goes vertical, that tells me that I've actually dropped in depth a couple more feet. I just need to move my this stopper towards my reel, okay, which is going to make my presentation from the stopper to the weight longer, which means it'll fish deeper. So anytime you're bobber dogging and your bobber is pointing down river, you're doing great. When it goes vertical, you just hit a drop off, reel it in, lengthen out your overall length of your presentation. And once it drops off that ledge, it'll still be deep enough to remain in contact with the bottom, allowing your bait to float within that strike zone. So hopefully that clears up a few things. I know we, again, we've shown many times how to properly rig and essentially now taking opportunity out here on the river to show you a really good piece of water that works great for bobber dogging or float drifting. And if it would work really great, you'd see that float go down. So 
All right, that's gonna do it uh, for us here out on the water with FHN. We jump out for a quick break. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.